At some point, we've all had the experience of encountering someone or coming across someone's work who appears to be much more competent, seemingly just a lot smarter than us. I've struggled with this many times, especially in my time as a chemistry major. People are often surprised when I've mentioned that that's what I studied in college, and I don't blame them for it. It can be a pretty dejecting feeling to know that you're not naturally as good as others at a subject or skill, or you just don't pick up something as quickly. My own doubts about becoming skilled at anything made me naturally curious in neuroscience, and in particular, the things that can help us learn faster. But what does it mean to build a better brain? Is this even possible? You might have heard of the case of taxi drivers and bus drivers in London. Researchers from the University of London studied and compared their brain structures in 2000 and discovered something notable. The taxi drivers had measurably larger hippocampi than the bus drivers. The theory behind their findings was that the taxi drivers had to essentially memorize the entire roadmap of London. They needed to know the best shortcuts and alternate courses to take, and that required in-depth knowledge about every street and alley in town. Right, I know these streets like the back of my hand. I've got no problem driving around these streets of London, which is where we are right now, and I just ran out of b-roll. The bus drivers, on the other hand, only had to drive a couple of pre-planned routes every day with little or no variation. They only needed to memorize a few turns and perhaps not even the street names. Similarly, it's been found that the brains of professional musicians have a higher volume of gray matter in portions of their brain responsible for auditory processing and motor functioning. Amateur musicians had slightly less gray matter and non-musicians had the least of all. Just like with the London taxi drivers, repetitive usage and exposure caused neuroplasticity. But what are the best practices that would increase your neuroplasticity? Of course, the foundational place to start is to have a healthy lifestyle, getting enough sleep, avoiding stress, eating a healthy diet. The best way to a healthy brain is through healthy lifestyle habits in general. But to expand on this point, author Peter Hollins gives a few additional principles as well. The first of which is this, stimulation is key. The driving force behind the workings of the brain is pure and simple. Neuroplasticity itself is nothing more than stimulation in a controlled and directed manner. The more stimulation, the more neural connections are built. Researchers at the University of Texas in Dallas determined that even at an advanced age, learning an unfamiliar skill can affect positive changes and improvements to the brain. For their study, they assigned 200 senior citizens the task of learning a new skill. Some were taught to quilt and others were taught digital photography editing. Subjects spent 15 hours a week learning their new skills. After that period, they were administered memory tests, which were also taken by control groups of senior citizens who did other activities like socializing, but didn't learn a new skill. The results weren't even close. The senior citizens who did learn that new skill for 15 hours a week showed vastly better memory, not only after the study was completed, Complete, but also a year later when there was another check-in. Whoa, what is it boy? What are you doing? Well, I've been up in my photography skills, see? Photography? How'd you get into that? Ever since I took a Skillshare course, all my skills have been going up and up and up. I've never heard of that. You trying to tell me you don't know what Skillshare is? Don't play with me now, boy. Well, you see, here's the thing. None of the ladies at the retirement home were feeling me. We're feeling what I was putting out. All of a sudden I started taking banger photos and now they want to go on nature walks, if you know who I feel it. An important component of neuroplasticity is this idea of salience. Basically, learning things that will one day be relevant to you. I think a big reason that my chemistry courses were never that helpful, they never stuck, is because deep down I felt that they weren't really relevant to the things that I would want to one day pursue. And one way that I found myself becoming more competent more rapidly recently is through Skillshare. Skillshare offers classes designed for real life so you can move your creative journey forward without putting your life on hold. You can learn and grow with short classes that fit a busy routine. Most recently, I went through Sorel's course on how to build an audience on YouTube, and I've continued to rewatch Christopher Rhodes' videos from the channel YC Imaging on pre-production. Click the link in the description box to get two months of Skillshare Premium for free and to explore your creativity. Thank you, Skillshare, for sponsoring this video once again. You up your skills, and the ladies will come crawling. The second principle that the author mentions is to enrich your environment. Surroundings play a large role in neuroplasticity. While the first principle involves taking active steps to increase and cultivate neural connections, having what's called an enriched environment allows you to passively accomplish the same end result. 
It means setting up your environment in a way that's conducive to getting work done. I'm sure you've had the experience, I've had it so, so many times where when my room is messy, when my space isn't clean, when it's completely frazzled up, then I just can't even think clearly. I can't get anything done. I can't even make sense of what should happen next. And as soon as I make that effort to maybe stack some books, put away my gear, make my space more elegant, make it more attractive, make it look nicer, I'm just able to think more clearly. I'm able to process information. I'm able to be more creative, which is totally amazing. I'm currently in the process of moving and I'm feeling the effects of this more than ever. When I go visit my new empty place, I do feel much clearer. I feel like, oh, I can actually have thoughts here in that quietude. One interesting thing that the author mentions is that the enriched environment that you create could be categorized into different goals of your life. So maybe you have a goal for your social life, to do more interesting things outside of the house. In this regard, you can make an effort to be the social planner in your friend group, or to be more proactive about being friendly to strangers and saying hi to them. Maybe you have a goal to increase your physical health. That's certainly something I have once the weather is starting to warm up. I wanna shed some of that winter fat. In this regard, you can enrich your physical environment in a way that makes it easier to go after your health goals. Maybe getting a standing desk or simply going for a walk while taking meetings. The point here is to recognize that your environment plays an inordinate role on even how your brain ends up working and how it ends up functioning. So regardless of what your resources or conditions might be, what steps can you take to make your environment more conducive to learning, progress, neuroplasticity. The third principle mentioned in the book is to be persistent, methodical, and repetitive. Hollins in his book gives the example of how the Grand Canyon was formed. At the bottom lies a small river, and through millions of years, this river slowly carved a chasm in the earth that is one of the biggest of its kind. That's an oversimplification of a geography, but the point here is pretty clear. Making something of your brain, forcing new dendritic connections, it's a long process, and it's something that should be met with, with patience and consistency. And I hope that serves as an empowering notion. We don't necessarily have to lament the fact that we're not good at something or that we could never be good at something. In fact, the greater the challenge that you experience in trying to master something, especially mastering something that involves your creativity, the more of an opportunity you have. The more of an opportunity you have to increase the gray matter in your brain, to increase the dendritic connections, and to chase out new possibilities, become someone totally new. This is something that I really, really believe in. It's something that I'm continuously reminding myself of and working towards. When I feel that I do have a lack of competence about something, when I'm not as talented about something, you know what? I don't have to necessarily be the most talented, just the most persistent in getting better. And for those of us who are willing to make those efforts to stimulate our brains, to learn, aggressively learn new skills, for those of us who are willing to enrich our environments, to make them conducive to doing our best work, and lastly, in being methodical, persistent, and repetitive in pursuing those skills, to us I say, greatness is coming. Wednesday.